this program on television. On the point of view, we select the right topic, bring the right guest, ask relevant questions, and we often leave you with insight. Tonight, uh, the big discussion is on the matter of the domestic debt exchange program and what the fate of the domestic bond, individual domestic bond holders or individual bond holders is. If you recall, government has said that it is voluntary uh, to partake in the DDE program. Uh, but at some point, it appeared it was not really voluntary. Uh, it appeared government was uh, finding ways of coercing people to sign up for the program. Um, so there came the domestic, individual domestic bond holders. They said they could not uh, sign on to the program because the program uh, will leave them or, you know, they, 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 it left them worse off. A lot of discussions have happened. The deadline for the program, sign up for the program is tomorrow. And the individual domestic bond holders had several meetings with government. A committee was set. Uh, some decisions were reached. I want to find out tonight what the state of play is with the domestic individual and individual bond holders and the DDE itself. Are we likely to see another extension? Have we you know, met the 80% threshold? What happens after tomorrow? That is our discussion tonight. My name is Selom Adunu, and uh, I will take a short break, return, introduce my guest, and then we'll, take a, we'll, we'll, we'll move the discussion forward. Once again, you're welcome to The Point of View. You're welcome to the point of view. Tonight we are looking at the domestic debt exchange program and what the fate of the individual bondholders is, what actually is the state of play. Uh, the deadline for signing up for the program is tomorrow. Mind you, we've had two uh, previous deadlines extended. Uh, I think it was 19 December, it came to 16 January, and now 31st January. Uh, would there be another extension? from tomorrow, it appears not, or at least for now we do not know. In the previous, okay, on the previous occasions, uh, a day or two before the deadline, the finance minister extended it. This time we've not heard anything. So we don't know what will happen and we don't know what, whether they've been able to meet the 80% threshold they wanted. Uh, tonight to help us do the discussion is Senor Hosi, who has been very popular. <laughs> you know, in the matter of the individual bondholders. Uh, Senor Hussi is convener of the Ghana Individual Bondholders Forum, the IBF. Um, also is Martin Pebu, who is convener of the Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana. And also uh, Joe Jackson, Director of Operations, Dealers Finance. Uh, these are my guests tonight. Gentlemen, you are welcome to the program. Uh, Senor, I, I, I start with you. Um, so the domestic bondholders or the individual bondholders initially were not part of this whole arrangement. We had the pension funds, we had the banks, we had the insurance company, a few others, you know, who were originally to be part of this. At some point, the pension funds, I mean, the uh, trade unions, etc., you know, said they were not good. They didn't want to be part of it. The pension funds should be exempted. They threatened government. They threatened they were going to go on demonstrations and strikes from 27th December or so government had to uh, yield to them, and so government eventually exempted the pension fund. So once the pension funds were off, government decided to bring in the individual bondholders. Now, after that announcement, we saw the birth of the individual bondholders forum, and then the bondholders, individual bondholders association of Ghana, led by Martin Pebu. Um, so tell us, you know, what is on the, what was on the table, what is on the table for the individual bondholders, and why are you guys opposed to it? Yeah, good evening to your viewers. Um, so, um, yes, you're right. The very first um, IM or info memo on the proposed um, debt exchange did not include individuals. But let's use the word properly. Mm. It talks about eligible parties. Okay. 
So pension funds were. And the second memo, it said individuals were also eligible. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the entire wording of the structure, it always insisted that it was supposed to be voluntary. But government was still using its media force, was also using its own official information, but not formal information, mm -hmm. to create that impression that you had to be part of mm -hmm. it. It wasn't really voluntary. So I think the last time I made, I made, I made the expression that this process started as a voluntary by force. Mm -hmm. But by God's grace, um, reason has prevailed, and mm -hmm. now for individuals, it is really voluntary, voluntary, mm -hmm. voluntary. The reason why we rose up against it was one, the positioning of the communication, not necessarily the info memo, but every action of government outside of the info memo, suggesting that individuals had to give up their current bonds or securities for this, mm -hmm. or you're going to have a situation where what they originally had was going to be worthless. That was inaccurate. That was illegitimate. That was oppressive. Mm. That was illegal. Mm. But you find it written anywhere. But you find it said everywhere yeah. by official persons of government. The Deputy Minister of Finance has been on record saying that you've had the likes of uh, uh, very close uh, parties to government also say the same. The Finance Minister himself has also said it, insinuating it in a very nice way, mm. creating a lot of fear and panic, which was very legitimate. Conceptually, as a body, we were not opposed to the DD. I'm, I'm in the market. Mm -hmm. I have businesses that are in the market. We manage investments for people. I have investments in a bank. I know the state of the economy. I know the implications of, of, um, of the times to our sustainability as a country. Mm -hmm. I can understand and, 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 and offer my own understanding of, of, of why we are where we are. I think we had the opportunity to have a debt crisis, a debt um, uh, conference or, mm -hmm. or panel yes, discussion yes, yes, yes. Yes, sometime yeah. here, yeah. And, and I was one of the resources yes, to, give, yes. to shed light mm -hmm. on it. It was very understandable that banks and the structured organizations mm -hmm. um, could participate in the mechanism to deal with Ghana's debt crisis. Whether you like it or not, government was always responsible mm -hmm. uh, for the crisis we find ourselves. And to be blunt as it is, the current government and the leadership of the current government were responsible for what, what mm -hmm. we have. And they had the responsibility to also to fix it. But as a country, we have a problem. We have to fix it together. Mm -hmm. You can blame whoever. You can decide to do the rock, as I said last time, Russia, Ukraine, and COVID. Mm -hmm. Or you can actually put it where it really is which is our own government. Either we, we are where we yeah. are, and we have to fix it mm -hmm. as a country. So cooperating with structured organization was reasonable in a structured way. And it also came with all kinds of safety nets to help people recover. You then bring in individuals who, had, who were not on the table. Mm -hmm. You had no conversation with them. You had no safety nets for them. You were trying to force this down yeah, that was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. That was oppressive. That's at variance with every single thing that we are supposed to stand for as Ghanaians. It's at variance with our national anthem. It's at variance with our pledge. It's at variance with the tenets of, of, of that of, of the of the of, of the of the principles that really bet our country Ghana by our forefathers. Mm. Uh, a number of us wouldn't take that. So we said, look, we had to definitely make sure. The position of individual bondholders and collective investment schemes are protected mm -hmm. and their voice legitimately heard and their interests assured fairly. Mm -hmm. So we started the advocacy, I mean, collectively as a group ourselves, the IBAC team, the pension funds also started, also went on the, on the advocacy. And thankfully, we were able to bring the matter to bear clearly that government could not do what it was doing. Government opened up to have an engagement with us, invited us to a, a meeting. We had one discussion, we had another technical committee meeting. And then eventually we landed up with a, with a report, mm -hmm. which I think you discussed on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And um, on Friday we had our, our last meeting. Um, I don't know if we're going to have another meeting. Mm -hmm. At the meeting, 
the minister agreed that their communication was a bit aggressive and suggestive, but um, we should definitely understand the, the circumstances of his time, which I can relate to because he was trying to push hard yeah. a solution in time. So if you are going to apply some Russian tactics or muscle things, in, it's part of, or part of a negotiation strategy. Mm -hmm. But having heard all our issues, understood the concerns, he wants to really assure us that it was really voluntary. And if anybody was not able to, is not able or willing to participate in his offer, um, he was not going to vary your mm -hmm. interests. He was not going to undertake any punitive action, which in, in fact is, at, is in, is in, is in, um, uh, is in conformity with the law mm -hmm. because you have a contract with bondholders. You can't vary it unilaterally. You can only vary it when both parties agree. Government has not filed for bankruptcy because government hasn't got any space in a bankruptcy law. No part. So you can't mm -hmm. even file for it. And bankruptcy is not a, a, a financial fact. Bankruptcy is a legal instance. So you actually have to go through a process. So government was not on the table with any kind of power or leverage or mandate to actually unilaterally um, de declare uh, a change in the terms that it was mm -hmm. engaging with anybody. That is why at all times government required everyone to sign up. Yes. You understand? Know if he could do it on his own, you saw the memo and from then the Attorney General. From the Attorney, General. Attorney General was quite it clear. It was very that government clear. Could not do that. If government had a chance, mm -hmm. would have done it. we would all wake up one day, did it. You understand? But they realized they can't. They needed to do it voluntarily. One, the engagement helped. And we, we came to that consensus. And today, uh, we are happy to actually inform, inform the general public. For every individual bondholder, every collective investment scheme, you are at liberty to reject the DDE. The DDE doesn't work for you. You don't take it. We have given you the analysis of it. The DDE, as it currently stands, wipes away about 88% of the value of your investment. Your 10000 will come down and become 1,200 or less, or 1,100 and, and 12 or something of that sort. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. All right, it doesn't work. The reason why we were defending individuals more, I, like I indicated last time, I do not object to the DD or trying to encourage institutions that I have investments with to participate like as a bank or as a fund management company because they are safety nets. But for individuals, there are no safety nets. Mm -hmm. Now, the other problem that we, we're missing is that individuals are the heart of the growth of every economy. They are savings because loanable funds primarily come from individuals and households. They don't come from firms. So when you crush the confidence of an individual to put money in the banking system or to invest money on our securities market, my brother, you are killing your economy. Mm -hmm. You must all start looking at Somalia not even Sudan. So it is not an option. I think that the policy makers may have missed that part of it because they were just trying to deal with an immediate problem, not realizing that they were going to create a longer term problem. And we must have a balance between the two. For that reason, we had to defend the cause of individual bondholders, not just for them, but for the sustenance of our own economy. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow you and I can functionally sit here. Otherwise we won't have an economy. And I'm very happy we found reason that people can find confidence that the system would work and make reason when it matters. And for that reason, nobody will lose trust in our financial system. Individuals will be happy to put their money in the bank. They will be happy to invest in a security, whether it's a company's commercial paper, whether it's a government's treasury bill, or a new government bond someday. People should feel, find confidence in investing in our financial markets, else we will not have an economy. Yes. So, so the, the, in, I'm, I'm just looking at the report. I mean, your, yeah. your, your press release dated today, um, part A, highlights of MOF meeting with IBF on Friday, 27 January 2023. Uh, point three says that the MOF has no responsibility for happenings on the secondary market. Yes. For this matter, the finance minister cannot assure market liquidity for the, for the old bonds. He believes the benchmark bonds will be more tradable uh, as more of those will be in circulation. It's voluntary, but he's saying that he has no responsibility for happiness on the secondary market. That's true. What does this mean to the individual bondholder who says that he is not going to um, sign up to the new bonds or the, the new uh, um, terms as suggested by the finance minister? 
he has no responsibility for the happenings on the one, secondary market. One, the finance market. minister has no responsibility yes. for what happens on the secondary mm -hmm. market for the new bonds mm -hmm. and for the old bonds. Mm -hmm. He has never had that yes. responsibility. And I don't see him ever having, having. that responsibility. So the, your situation is not different. Mm. Now the question is whether it's going to be liquid or not liquid. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be traded or not traded? The bonds are still tradable bonds because they were listed as tradable bonds on the Ghana fixed income market. Mm -hmm. So it's not a declaration by somebody that changes that. What his concern, I want to believe, is, is that, okay, we have a lot more of the new bonds. Maybe people will be trading that more, more than, than the old ones because the, old, one, cause the lo old ones are not that much. But one thing you have to remember is that this is what 10% of the total eligible bonds that he's looking at. Mm. This 15 billion. That's a lot of mm -hmm. a lot of bonds. All right. Now, so the trading, trading, the quantum and its tradability is not in question. The next thing you have to look at at the new bonds and the old bonds, which one will be of more of value. Mm -hmm. The new bonds are of higher value because they have you do a higher return, mm -hmm. and secondly, it gives you a stronger legal standing than the new bonds. Yeah, the old bonds are of higher return. They are mm -hmm. higher return, and also they give you um, stronger cash flows. Mm -hmm. They also give you stronger legal protection mm -hmm. than the new bonds. The new bonds. The new bonds, government can decide to keep... Uh, the government uh, could unilaterally change the terms. Can, can, yes, can recourse. change. And also even tell you, I can't pay. And mm -hmm. you can't do anything. You can go to court. You can't enforce the judgment. But with the old bonds, government can't do that. Mm -hmm. Anything it does, it will hit it. So it will avoid that. Mm -hmm. So on the scorecard, you are always better off with the, with the old bond. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, you... May, some may say because they are 100% risking the new bonds for mm -hmm. banks, so banks are out of the market. I don't believe banks are out of the market. That matter will be dealt with financially and legally because that 100% that, that risking that by the central bank is not founded in any principle of finance or law. All right, But I think for the exercise, trying to encourage people to participate in the exercise, everybody is muscling it out. Mm -hmm. So you muscle it out and let's get this program going because we all need a program. But when we are, it's all done and dusted, that grammar will have to change. Mm -hmm. Because none of the people sitting at the Bank of Ghana, with the education they have, even believe what they are even trying to do. So we'll deal with that at a later time. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you still have active players who are interested in this particular bond. The mm -hmm. pension funds are looking for high returns. Yeah. Because they have to make sure they can beat inflation. Mm -hmm. You can't beat inflation with a 5% coupon rate. Mm -hmm. When your inflation right now is 54. Point yeah. I mean, which school did you go to? <laughs> you see, so there's no, nobody can beat you to it. So mm -hmm. if you have a paper that's yielding 20%, the, pe the pension funds are more likely to actually beat that mm -hmm. than to go with, with a 0% coupon or a 5% coupon or a 10% coupon. So mm -hmm. pension funds will be very interested in it. So look, everybody out there who decides to keep your old bond, I am very confident. I, 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 for my financial analysis, all the skills I've had trading across, across the world and managing different financial assets, the technical team of, um, of the IBF, myself and whoever, can assure you that is not a risk you really carry. Mm -hmm. you, have, you actually have the opportunity to trade a superior paper. No. That on the scorecard is clear. No. As to whether the market will have appetite for the financial markets in general, that is a matter that will evolve. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the scorecard, so and nobody's telling you bonds. today, mm -hmm. old bond versus new bond, mm -hmm. there's no kind of science or mass that will put the new bond above, over above this one. Mm -hmm. So well. if it's, that is the risk you are looking at, then that one, day, I'm sorry, doesn't even exist for mm -hmm. starters. But general risk of a market, with market performance, any kind of thing that and happens, the finance minister that one, it doesn't also. guarantee that. I can't even guarantee that. Nobody can guarantee that. But it's a matter that evolves and will be a, a general matter. Another thing, some of the, the papers are corporate bonds. Mm -hmm. So you have something like ESLA. So somebody may say, do I want government of Ghana risk or I want ESLA risk? Mm -hmm. Or I want get fund risk through Dachi, the Dachi, the Dachi bond. bond. All these entities are different. The risk profile of everyone will vary from time to time. Mm -hmm. You have to evaluate that. Yeah. Very well. Let, 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 me, let me go to uh, Joe Jackson, Director of Operations, uh, Dallas Finance. Uh, Joe, welcome to the program. The, uh, the discussion between government and the individual bondholders appear to uh, be getting to a place or has gotten to a place. Deadline is tomorrow. First of all, do you anticipate that this deadline will be moved or, or extended as we've seen on two previous occasions? Good, good evening and uh, a shout out to my younger brother, Senor Hossi. Senor. Well, I love Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, 
I tell you, one of the challenges I have is that I haven't seen the new revised offer yet. Mm. So, in truth, even though the deadline is tomorrow, right, for everybody who's either has to make a decision based on, uh, uh, for now, on a, a corporate decision, because really what I, uh, you don't have the, the terms to finalize. I suppose it'll come out tomorrow. Mm. If it does come out tomorrow, it leaves pretty little time for uh, final examination to make sure the devil is always in the detail. Mm -hmm. I, I really do think that the deadline may be extended by one or two days, a few days. One or two, I mean, a few days. I see. A few so, days. So you, you think government has enough to go ahead? I mean, yes, it may be extended, but given that the, the banks, the insurance companies, and even the security uh, uh, the security industry, I should say, have all signed up now. You think government has enough to go ahead even without the individual bondholders? It does. And I think the most, uh, it, it, it took the decision to find a diplomatic way of excluding the individual bondholders by saying to them that uh, I, I would love it if you would... Uh, uh, sign on, but even if you don't sign on, I will not default. Mm. Which for me is a victory to the the brave gentlemen who have fought the government to uh, uh, who fought the government over this issue. Right, the government has to be realistic, and just maybe this will force it to undertake some of the actions to reduce expenditure mm. that we've been advocating from day one and so it's going to be tough and bear in mind it's going to be really really tough on the financial sector let no one be confused the financial sector was between a rock and a hard place mm. and so how to agree to those terms i suppose the insurance company and the rest were all in the same space so they had to agree but i tell you this it's going to be a tough tough time and we really genuinely hope that the government will keep up to its promises of providing this uh, uh the, the stability fund not just for the commercial banks but across all the institutions in the financial sector including non-banks including rural banks including savings and loans because all of us are going to be affected. And I also hope that this effort is open and transparent. The, 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 the stability fund, for example, I don't know if you have some clarity on that. We, we understand that government and some donor partners will make contribution into that fund, 15 billion fund or so, uh, to be made available to, to, the, to the financial industry. Uh, we, we don't know who those donors are. We don't know under what conditions they'll be making a contribution to the fund. What do you know about it? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know enough to say it. In fact, a few weeks, I was, a few weeks ago, I was calling it the Phantom Fund. Mm. But uh, I have to believe and hope that it is not a Phantom Fund and that it will happen and it will happen in a way in which it will help stabilize this financial sector. Bear in mind, no country, no country can afford for its financial sector to suffer significant losses and the, uh, impairment of its uh, assets and so on and so forth. No, no, no country. So whatever happens, we've got to make sure that this, uh, this stability fund works and it works to assist the liquidity of the institutions. If you take my money, that is going to be due next, this year and next year, and you spread it for 12 years, starting from 2027. I don't know what, what, how you would describe it, but the liquidity effect is huge. Then with that liquidity effect, it gets a profitability effect. Because first of all, I don't have access to the funds. Second, my funds are deposited as funds. They are not free funds. So there's a cost to them. 
So when you're paying that coupon of 5% or 9% to an average, uh, weighted average of 9%, all that's happening is that that's below my weighted average cost of funds. And so I'm going to be hit. And the institutions that have large and significant deposits are going to be in deep trouble. Mm. I, I see. I wanted to find out whether the uh, the 15 billion stability fund, the, the, the 15 billion is just for a year, or that will be the, the, the total uh, amount of money <laughs> that the fund will have, you know, I forever. believe it's the total. But again, we are all waiting to see the, the full details and how to manage. Mm. And I just hope it will be private sector led mm. and not uh, uh, managed from within the government area. Because then again, we get into all sorts of issues from past experience. If it's mm. private sector led, I think it'll be better. Mm. But we are still waiting for the full to be appraised of all the full modalities. Mm. I, I see. So, so uh, Joe, I'll take a quick break. Um, I'll return and want to find out from you whether government is biting too much, whether government could have found a way of making this easier on itself. Uh, Martin Kwebu is also on the line. We will also come back and speak to him on what he makes of all that is happening, whether uh, the, uh, the talk by government that indeed this is very voluntary gives him some respite. You know, he's also been leading uh, the Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana. Uh, and so himself, Senor Hussi, David Tete, Thelma Tewi, and a few others uh, have been leading the charge for the individual bondholders. Indeed, um, it won an entry to host one side of the table with the pensioners. Uh, we'll come back and then continue the discussion. This is Point of View. Don't go away. Welcome to Jamila Home, a signature business that houses the most luxurious antique and contemporary furniture. We stock presidential, royal, ministerial, and executive furniture with complementary decor. We have a wide selection of beautifully maintained pieces, such as the amazing Windsor chairs with one of the largest choices of genuine Regency and Victorian dining furniture, which once stood for England's finest craftsmanship. Renowned across the world for its luxurious and detailed features, alongside a brilliant blend of Italian contemporary Versace royal set in absolute elegance. Visit our website, www.jamilahome.com. Contact us via phone call and WhatsApp on 0302 Four three seven two two eight and zero two zero five 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 two five. We are located at thirteen Westland Boulevard, Accra. Jamila Home, your first and best furniture showroom in Ghana and the world. Yeah, welcome back to the point of view. We are looking at the individual bond holders and their discussions with government and what has become of that discussion. Government indeed has told them that it is voluntary. Uh, Senor Jose says in, in from the beginning or in the beginning it appeared like voluntary by force. And now finance minister told them on Friday that indeed it is voluntary. And so they can decide to sign up or not, but he will wish that they, 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 they signed up. Um, Senor Jose and his people are telling the individual bond holders, their members that know, they should not sign up because it is not a good deal. And the finance minister has undertaken to honor his obligation under the old, uh, um, the, the, the old arrangement. You wanted to say something? I just modify that part. Okay. Uh, he has said it's voluntary. Yes. And that but we shouldn't really be stopping anybody who may want to. Yes, okay. So it's and voluntary. Then, and it's voluntary. Mm -hmm. So what we have said we've done is assure our members mm -hmm. that if you hold on to your current bonds, your interest is fully protected. Mm -hmm. Your rights and responsibilities mm -hmm. are honored. Your rights and, and rights mm -hmm. are not subordinated mm -hmm. to the rights of the new holders of the new mm -hmm. bond. 
That's not the so case. So there are two separate streams. Yeah, and two, two, um, everybody has their rights as mm -hmm. captured there, mm -hmm. as originally mm -hmm. was the case. Mm -hmm. All okay. right, so that's it. But we have also we are also telling anybody if you are willing, you want to for any mm -hmm. reason, you think that maybe you find it nice or maybe to want are, to do. You are, so. you are patriotic. And you want to be now. Of course, I, everybody patriotic. I'm patriotic, patriotic because honestly, I think that sustaining confidence to run the wheels of our economy mm -hmm. through individual savings and trust in our system is more patriotic mm -hmm. than trying to go and pretend that you're okay with this and then you rather punish the economy by not reinvesting the economy. Mm -hmm. That's more dangerous. These same individuals are the same ones who when we increase taxes, PAY mm -hmm. have accepted to pay. Mm -hmm. Have you seen an aluta for an increase in our PAY? Not yet. You are here, aren't you suffering that PAY? <laughs> They've increased our VAT. Are you on strike? Mm. Have you done Kumi Preko? No. Individuals are already cooperating. It's Martin Tobu and Co. who have a new Kumi Preko. Reload no, no, Martin, no, Martin, I'll come the, to you. The, the, but uh, Joe Jackson wants to leave. So let me just finish with him quickly. Then I can, I can concentrate or focus on, on, on Martin. So, so Joe, um, do you think that government has been harsh on itself or hard on itself in seeking to uh, push this program the way it's pushing? Of course, 55% debt to GDP ratio by 2028. Your colleagues like Tio Champo and Co. feel that uh, government could have asked for more time, say to 2032, to allow itself some space and, and the bondholders to be able to do this better under less pressure. What's your view on this? Well, <clears throat> it's interesting that you say government is going to be hard on itself when the personalities that are negotiating this are not going to be around to meet the targets that have been set. Mm. So, I, 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 unfortunately, I, I'm not very sympathetic in that, on that score. If I set a target and I'm leaving in two years and the target is to be met by somebody else, why do you say I'm being hard on myself? I mean, gov government I'm is a continuum. So, so, so government itself, maybe not the it personalities. It is a continuum, but, but this is, but I, I agree, otherwise we wouldn't even be talking about the default, but at the same time, think about it, the, the principal characters in this drama or tragedy or whatever you choose to call it, are going to be leaving the stage in two years' time. Mm. And yet, we are going to be suffering for another Many years. 12 years, mm. 15 years. Yeah. So being hard on itself, you are being hard on the subsequent governments. Hmm. I see. Uh, yes. We, we, we also it has heard, to be. Mm -hmm. we, we, we also heard today that it, our debt situation is worsened quite a bit. Uh, our debt has hit $575 billion, and debt to GDP ratio now is 93.5%, uh, as stated by the Bank of Ghana. Do you think that this worsening debt situation uh, could make the the I mean government's position in respect of the DDE any worse. Listen, the position with the DDE it's the position. In any case, right? Uh, uh, this debt, uh, even though it is it is scary, the most scary thing I've heard about our debt wasn't the announcement that was made yesterday or was it today. Mm. It was the announcement when the debt position was being launched by the uh, Minister of Finance that between 70 to 100% of all tax revenue is going to be spent paying the interest on our debt. Mm. That should That's... scare everybody. That was, nice. that was before accurate. we gave a 30% increment to public service workers mm -hmm. so that's that's what should scare you mm. is that 70 to 30 percent of all our tax revenue going into debt service is what should scare you not even the, the size of the debt forgive me there are other countries that owe over 100 percent of their gdp and they are not in debt distress because they can pay mm. we cannot pay our debts that's why there's, there, we have to do uh, this, uh, some semblance of the debt exchange uh, 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 program. We can't pay. So the announcement that should scare all Ghanaians was the foreign minister, uh, the finance minister, saying that 70 to 100% of all tax revenue 
is expected to be used to service our debt. And listen, this thing is getting crazier and crazier. The rates on T-bills are rising with each auction. A year ago, T-bills for 91 days were sub-11%. Uh, uh, Today, they are 34% and rising. Hmm. That should scare all of us because that bill for the interest is going higher mm -hmm. and higher and higher. So, hey. I see. That uh, GDP ratio mm -hmm. is not, for me, the scary statistic. Mm -hmm. It is the ratio of interest to our tax revenue. Mm. Uh, that, okay, so a little correction. Yeah, so. Everybody panic. Mm. Uh, all right, so so. Um, so I, I think yeah. what what Joe is talking about is the total debt service package, not just interest, yeah. which is on principal no. repayments. No, senor. But, but look senor. at the, look, look at look at the budget, um, Joe. You actually senor, have I'm interest. Quoting, senor, I'm quoting the finance minister. His I am not looking at the budget. I'm oh, okay. quoting him verbatim when he <laughs> launched the debt exchange program. Go and check Ghana Web. It's there. I, I, I would I would want to believe maybe it was part of the scam on green tactics to okay. really get because right. uh, if, if, because if you look at it it is definitely scaring me mm. yeah I, I agree I agree <laughs> that, that would scare anybody because yeah. what, but when you look at when you look at the budget it doesn't allude to that mm. because looking at the I budget I suspect the budget remember when the budget was re, was being developed uh, 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 um, the rates for t-bills have not written risen this high and i suspect mm. the budget had already factored in uh some semblance of a, a debt exchange program no they i mean they they, they didn't the budget no, no, didn't the, the, the budget actually that, uh, talked they, about a debt operation hold on. So, so in, in, no, in our in our technical committee mm. meeting it was very clear mm. that the budget didn't provide for debt the, operation Operations. But they mentioned the they mentioned the debt operation. They, the they indicated this. I think they want to do, but the budget numbers never factored it. Never. I, I, I see. Let but it made provision for the IMF inflow. Okay. So, so just, just 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 so just just to, no, I, I want to, to bring to, in Martin. To, Martin is to for, yeah, Martin uh, is for it. So Joe, I uh, understand you have to leave. Thanks so much as always for, yes, for thank for you your very much and your and, insight. And in this. I, yes. I want to leave saying that if the finance minister starts to scare us, I was really scared. <laughs> then maybe he succeeded. Then maybe he succeeded there. All right. Uh, so thanks so much, uh, Joe. Uh, Martin, um, welcome to the program. Apologies for keep for keeping you waiting. I read your press statement you issued over the weekend, uh, full of optimism. And in fact, you said you were looking forward to a written communication of the promise for ease of reference, among other reasons. We've not seen any such um, written communication between the position you articulated in your statement. And that thing ends tomorrow. Um, have you seen, have you been communicated to? And what was the source then of this optimism you expressed in your in your in your press statement? Okay. Yes. Hello. Good evening. Good. So at least, but you would see that today the Daily Graphic has the Finance Minister confirming that government would honor its obligation. Mm. So though I expected one on the ministry's letterhead, etc. Half a loaf is better than none. At least you see the daily graphic story. I don't know if you've seen it. Yes. Yes. So it's been confirmed that uh, government would honor its obligations under the existing bonds. So it's not bad, but I believe eventually we will get a more formal communication on the government of Ghana letterhead. That should do. And if that's practically exempting now. You see how Joe Jackson put it, that uh, the finance minister is finding a diplomatic way of saying we are exempt. He should just say, it. you know, sometimes these things, yeah, we all, you know, kind of get it wrong. Maybe initially he thought he could woo individual bondholders to come on board, but it didn't turn well. There's nothing wrong. It's, I mean, it's one nation. But, you know, well, that's his choice. But it's not that bad. Hmm. Yeah, um, I also get the impression that uh, indeed it's been said that government or the finance ministry will put some new terms on the table for the 
individual bondholders. We are not sure if those terms have been put on the table yet. And is it a situation where you want to look at those terms and, and, and make a decision, a better decision, or make a decision, or you are satisfied with the status quo now and, and you, you've made up your mind already? Yeah. Uh, Salam, we've made up our minds. What we are holding is good enough. Yeah? And you heard Senor say, we've started saying this yesterday, that look, listen, what we are holding in all probability is much better than what the minister wants to offer. Because indeed, if the minister could offer something better than what we are holding, then he wouldn't be doing a debt exchange program. You see, yes, if the minister exactly. could offer something better, we wouldn't be in this program. So in all probability, what we are holding is better. And people, I mean, it's really what I've seen gathering from the platforms is that people are not ready for any new bonds. They just want to hold on to what they have. Yeah. I see. This is the point of view. We are looking at uh, the matter of the individual bondholders and the domestic debt exchange program, you know, on, on, on its, I mean, in its entirety. Uh, the deadline for the extended deadline is tomorrow. Uh, Joe Jackson, we just had a couple of minutes ago, says he thinks that there could be a few days extension because uh, government has promised to make some new terms available to the individual bondholders. And government has just between now and tomorrow to do so. He thinks that government cannot just bring in the expert people to sign up to it tomorrow. And so he thinks there should be a few days uh, of extension. Uh, Senyo, I'm not sure what he thinks, but generally they are set in their mind what they want to do, whether new terms or not, their decision has been made. Uh, we'll take a short break, return and continue the discussions, and I'll read your text messages uh, when you return. Uh, this is the point of view. We'll be right back. Become a household. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you will flip a real estate gaming platform that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidated yeah! plans, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com. Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anywhere and win. Flip it or own it. You go flip. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. You're welcome back to the point of view. Uh, we are looking at the individual bondholders, what the state of play is. Uh, the uh, Ministry of Finance has indicated that tomorrow is the deadline for uh, signing up to eight new bonds. And generally, it's clear that the individual bondholders uh, who have been the sticking point for this particular uh, program uh, will not sign up. Indeed, they've had assurances from the ministry or the Minister of Finance, that indeed it is voluntary, and so they can decide to join or not, but they should not stop people who want to join from joining. Uh, Martin Kubo has said that their minds are made up. Um, uh, Senor Hosi in the studio here has also said their minds are made up, and so they are not joining. Um, Senor, for, for people who do not really understand this, government initially uh, said that if you have maturing bonds, you should come and then exchange those bonds for four new ones. And then, so the four new ones change into uh, it's about 12 new yeah, ones. 12. So can you take us through what the coupon rate for each of those bonds, or new, new bonds were, and how bad it was? Uh, and so people didn't have to join. Or you're calling on people not to join, as it were. Uh, well, how bad was it? Can you tell us what the coupon rate and et cetera uh, was on, 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 or are on these new, new bonds? For which reason uh, your members are unhappy? With, with the terms government is proposing? Well, hmm. let me start by responding to what Ma Martin said. Hmm. 
Martin made reference to half a loaf. Mm -hmm. I think Martin is totally wrong, and I mm -hmm. would ask him to submit a bottle of wine before I pond him tomorrow morning. <laughs> we have been giving the full loaf. No, I think what he meant was they that gave us yeah. a full loaf with butter. Mm. What he meant the was only that thing they didn't add. Let me income. finish. Okay. The only, only thing that they had mm. we didn't have was jam, okay. but the bread and, bread butter and butter is here. Yeah. So Martin, what are you talking about? <laughs> how half what loaf? This is the loaf. But I have no jam. But I'm half butter jam, is the okay. Jam is if it's, if that beef can not like sugar, so I like my. <laughs> <laughs> I like my butter like that. So what again? The matter is solved. It's just done. Yamutu. It's, it's, it's done. And look, I have to be grateful to the finance minister. Mm -hmm. You know, because he's been cooperative. Mm -hmm. Very warm in our meetings. Very mm -hmm. warm. He's not been cold. Mm -hmm. He said views I don't agree and also share back my views I don't agree. But he's been very, very, very warm. And Mr. Minister, we are grateful. And I think we also need to commend him. What he's trying to achieve is about record. Mm. Trying to get a debt exchange program in what, like three months or whatever it is. I don't know what time it is. It is like a record deal. Mm. But he's trying to push it so we can actually hit certain hard timelines mm -hmm. with the IMF, which we all understand. And to the extent that we find it sustainable for the economy, we support. We just don't find adding individuals as something that's sustainable for the economy. More importantly, his solutions to achieve that target, Selom, are supposed to be in two different buckets. Mm. One bucket is the fiscal readjustment bucket. The other one is a debt operations bucket. Mm -hmm. But it's focusing if on the three debt buckets, operations. But all will come and sit in the fiscal one. The third one that be a structural reform mm. bucket. But it's all sitting inside the fiscal readjustment bucket. In the fiscal readjustment bucket, you look at your revenue, you look at your expenditure, you also look at structural reforms that support these two things, revenue and expenditure, mm. sustainably and facilitate growth. Your debt operations, you have to look at how you restructure your debt, see what kind of forgiveness you get from people, see how you can remodel it so it can sustain, it can match with cash flows that you have. What we have seen the government spend more time do is just look at the debt. debt operation, yeah. There's a lot of room in the fiscal readjustment bucket. So and is that it that the fiscal readjustment measures are more difficult to undertake compared to the debt operation? It needs a certain level of will. It mm. is a hard decision to mm. make. One, you want to right-size government. Mm. It means you are going to have people, your party full soldiers, a lot of them go home. Mm. You are going to have to let go maybe some state-owned enterprises. What that will also mean for you is that the leverage, political leverage that you have that you were influencing and controlling things for some rent seeking, mm -hmm. all those things will be gone. All right? Mm -hmm. So God, right now you can't go and be doing those things at Vodafone. Mm -hmm. But yeah. before before you could do that, you remember there used to be times where Ghana Airways they could stop the whole Ghana Airways because there's some ministers, <laughs> son or daughter and then their children were yet to come. Mm -hmm. Those things don't happen again when you privatize these institutions. Yeah. You get efficiency. So the room for job job, the room for any kind of reckless be behavior and appointing apparatchiks into this very significant will be gone. Mm -hmm. If you also want to take a major decision like trying to reduce your capital expenditure, we have recommended for that, for example. It means that if you have made some promises on some project, it won't happen. Mm -hmm. If people, polit party, party, party folks have also planned to get local fuel around those projects, it means it won't happen. It means that the opportunity to do local fuel will drop. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of of uh, selfish for, 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 for going. Uh, and I see the suggestion go. about property rates yeah. and all of that, which we've spoken about many So times. now you think about it, mm -hmm. who own the properties? <laughs> so it means you have to take hard decisions. Mm -hmm. So that becomes a difficult one. It is a proper sweat matter. If you have to look at structural reforms to promote growth, it is not a matter of just borrowing money and come to show some kind of activity that feeds politics. Mm -hmm. It is a hard decision to take. But that is the road that this country has required for a long time. We have to start taking the hard decisions. Otherwise, Selom, we are back here in two years mm. where we want a different debt operation. And this time, I don't know what we are going to be giving away. Whether I'm going to add our wives and children, our fathers and mothers, I don't know. It is going to come back if we don't correct our fiscal measures. Because this problem did not come from space. It did not come from Russia, Ukraine, or COVID. It came from our fiscal decisions. 
our politics, how we manage our political activities as far as the economy is concerned. Mm. That is what put us where we are. People say COVID. Look at the waste in COVID. You saw the Auditor General's report, and mm. that's an understatement. It's an understatement. How long did it take us to build uh, uh, what Ghana's first uh, infectious disease center? Mm. 100 bed one, fully equipped. The largest single, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, ICU unit that you have in the whole country. Mm. How long did it take us? It took us three months. How much did it take us? But that was private sector. Private like sector to led. Efficiency but anymore. we had public sector donations. Mm. Bank of Ghana was one of our biggest donors. GMPC was one of our biggest donors. Mm. But it was private sector led. Look at the efficiency we achieved. Mm. Look at the money we have spent. Going to rent a whole hospital, a whole whatever house, 15 million, spent 20 million for what? Mm. You see, there are problems. Everybody should stop talking about COVID and Russia and Ukraine. It is our own management of our affairs, our recklessness, our irresponsible, our lack of adequate love for country. Mm. Because if you think about this country, when you see COVID money coming, it's not that, that's not the time where you think that it is time to chop. Mm. We went working and sweating for this country because we're looking at the lives we're saving. Nobody was out there for a dime. The only thing I got out of that project was the tea or coffee when I go to the site is there for everybody to, do, to, to take. Yeah. Even fool, I, didn't took, I, had to, I, had, I had to find my own self throughout the process. Wow. That was the sacrifice that people were making. We had architects, structural engineers, professionals. They, they for one, working for free. They had to forego their, 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 their jobs coming to work for the country. Then you come back and see people waste money like this in mm -hmm. COVID. Then come and tell us our economic crisis is because of COVID. It's a lie. It's a corruption. Mm. It is the corruption. It is the abroad Nibaye. That is what is the problem. Mm. We get opportunity to serve people and we do the reverse. We want to lord it over them, we want to extort it over them. And we just forget that there are lives that we are dealing with. And after turning around, you want to put your hands in their pocket, their savings. Massa, why? Mm. <laughs> That's you see, I didn't even answer your question. No, yes, yes. You cry. Why did you set me on this tangent? <laughs> so, 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 Martin, I mean, uh, Senor is set himself on a certain tangent. Okay, no, so I, I don't have Martin. But, Senor, do you think, of course, you, you said quite no, a No, Martin thing. must come yes. and face his yes. friend and come and say half a loaf. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm saying that, of course, you, you said quite a number of things. But do you think that, given all you've said, all we've seen from the COVID uh, uh, Auditor General's report and all of that, you think government has learned its lessons, given what we've seen them go through in this debt? Uh, operation and tomorrow we hope it ends. You know, you think government has learned some useful lessons it can help itself with in the next few years? It has definitely learned lessons as to how to engage. Mm -hmm. It knows that, it now knows that you just don't assume that people mm -hmm. are, are disorganized so you can actually run things through them. Because when there's common interest, there's a basis for proper organization. Mm -hmm. All right? Now, the most important thing, you see, it's a very sad thing for a finance minister because he may not always be the one at the center of actual operating spending. Mm. This run through the MDAs outside of his place. But if he doesn't improve his oversight or work on, 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 on fiscal controls, these are the problems that he would have. He will solve this with dot operations, but will end up coming back and then enter a bigger debt crisis for Ghana. Mm. Because people are going on a spending spree in 2023 if this debt operation is done. People are going on another spending spree in 2024. And just mark my words, we will have a very sad Auditor General to really uh, report to, to read in 2024 and 2025. Finance Minister must take the hard decisions. Start cleaning up the mess in our governance structure. If it means us looking at how we review our constitution, let's do it. But the, the finance hard minister's decisions job must or, be or, done. Or is, 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 is the president's job or the government's job? At the end of the day, he has an oversight over the fiscal. He mm. reports to the president. But the president must be woke to this matter. Mm. Ken is going, is, is going to have a legacy on his hand. What legacy does he want? Mm. I don't think this is the kind of legacy he wants to end with. I don't think that this is what the MPP should want to end with. The problem we have is in our governance frame. Mm. And it's our bad management of our activities. You, our finance minister can wake up one money. Ministers have gone to even through some one, two, three, sign contracts or committed you, and then you realize that, Charlie, you have a problem. Mm. So I really pity Ken sometimes. That's why he's taking the easy route. Finance, let me deal with the finance people, debt operations. But that will not solve the problem. We have to fix recklessness, irresponsibility, and corruption in our fiscal management. That is the way forward. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, you will come back to this place. Just like we did it in Kufor's time, and we have come back again. We went to uh, Jomama's time, we have come back again. Every day we go, we come back. Mm -hmm. 
out for us that we are super comeback. Oh. It doesn't because, work. Because the root... The real the, problem is not being solved. Mm. Every day we are dealing with some things at the top. Shall, How can you carry 300,000 people and put in, in the public sector? What are you going to get? Mm. A lot more inefficient. The things are already inefficient. Then put more people there. More inefficiency. Meanwhile, you say you are doing digitization. In fact, what are you thinking? Mm. How has digitization become the panacea for increasing a lot more people in the public sector? That's when you reduce it. When you reduce it, what you actually have, you create more room for private sector to access capital and do jobs that sustain the economy. Mm. Government is supposed to stimulate and facilitate the sustainability of an economy. And that is actually is MPP philosophy. But they are doing the reverse. Mm. Honestly, like I told you last night, I can't recognize this party. You. <laughs> I don't think they have a philosophy anymore. <laughs> All right, so that, that's Senior Hussey. Uh, you know, we, we've been looking at the matter of the individual bondholders and what the state of play is. The deadline, as stated by the finance minister a few weeks ago, elapses tomorrow. We don't know if that deadline will be extended. Joe Jackson thinks that um, a few more days should be added so that people may take decisions, make decisions properly. Uh, Senyo and Martin, people who joined us earlier, say that their minds have been made up. They, they are leaders of the two individual bondholders groups, IDF and IBAG. And so that is where we are. We don't know whether the date will be extended tomorrow, but we'll be here, whatever the case is, to report to you and, and tell you what it is. Uh, this is how we conclude today's edition of the program. Uh, uh, we are grateful to the ministry yes, yes, for they say they are, they are grateful to the ministry for engaging them and the fact that the ministry has emphasized that you know, it is voluntary and if, for individual bondholders. And if any of them will want to do it, uh, they are encouraged to sign up. And if you don't, nothing will happen. And if you don't, nothing happens to you. They will pay you. your they money. Will, they will... They will uh, respect the obligations that will That's fall right. due, as it were. So, uh, thanks so much, my guest, uh, Senior Hosin, the studio convener, Ghana Individual Bondholders Forum, uh, Martin Pebu, who joined us on Zoom, Individual Bondholders Association of Ghana. And then we had Joe Jackson, uh, Director of Operations at Delex Finance. Thank you very much all for doing the viewing. So, my name is Salom Adunu, I'm studying for uh, Bernard Koku Able. Have a good evening. Welcome to another edition of your Effective Living series. This is your 2023 Starter Pack. It's on CTFM and CTTV. My name is Bernard Avle. We've been trying to set you up for the year 2023, and we've focused on four specific areas. This is our final week where we've been talking about financial foundations.